You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benning Rome. I've seen the way you've been looking at those cuffs. You behave. Oh, hello. Um, welcome to Chewing the Cud. I don't trust you. What do you mean, don't trust me? I really just don't trust you. <laughs> don't give me those innocent looks. I'm innocent. Yeah, right. I'm innocent until proven guilty. <sighs> believe that if you must. Uh, what have you got for us today, Mike? I don't need to believe it. It's the way the law system works in this country. Um, but I have a story about how a dead relative can help you at the bank. And then I'll get all creative in Crafty Queens. Oh, OK. And we're going to have a game to play in our Game of the Week. But on screen now you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And the names of people who have bumbled into our old internet go along the bottom of the screen. We go over to Mist and the Showbiz. <laughs> Is that a bit warm? It's a bit full. It, it, well, you said two pods. Two pods, not two pods, and then <laughs> just let it keep running for six weeks. <laughs> Empty the full tank into one cup. Well, I wanted you to be sustained. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You found your stories yet? I have, oh. yeah. <laughs> Could you tell I was stalling? Yes. <laughs> so, the first story we have mm -hmm. about that long stalwart celebrity been around for absolutely ages and really garnered a lot of respect. Jojo Siwa. Okay. Yeah. Why do I why do I sense that you're not a fan <laughs> of Jojo Siwa? I mean, who is she? She's family. She's family? Mm -hmm. You related to Jojo Siwa? No, I think she's LGBTQ. Oh, yes, I, do. I know she's one of ours. Yeah. So I suppose we should... We we'll give her some, some, some time. We'll give her some time. Well, I'm, I'm about to. So, she's... Um, Going into uh, pop music and entering, um, well, you know when a child star is inevitably wanting to get a longer career and, and, and grow up a little bit, so they start doing, oh, I'm so sexy and off the, porn? yeah. Not porn, okay. but, you know, just trying to be a bit salacious and sexy and, oh, I've gone off, all off the rails. She's doing that. It sounds because I've actually gone off the rails. Mm. <sighs> I don't think Britney was putting it on. I don't think Britney was putting it on, and I think the way Miley Cyrus was hypersexualized and had a bit of a bite to it to say, how dare you say I can't. And she's definitely following that mould. Okay. But it's Jojo C. So there's still kind of, like, she's putting on, like, do you remember the band Kiss? I'm aware of Kiss. Yeah, so she's doing all that makeup and stuff like that, but still got the, there we go, look at her. With um, all the hair still done up, though, and it's just, it's very much drawn on. If she's happy, that's all that matters. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I, I, I'll give her that, but she's, I think probably what's irritated me about it is because as part of this era, um, after releasing Karma, which is a big song that she's done, what? Um, the video for that's full of hypersexuality in terms of trying to kiss girls, which, okay, great, lesbianism, lovely, but it's it, they're not quite kissing, so it's a bit more... Well, feels feels more like straight titillation rather than gay rights. It's more, more along the lines of tattoo. Mm -hmm. kind of, like, oh, yeah. no, we're lesbians, we're in love, we're just stroking each other gently. It's like, it feels less for the community and more about... Selling um, shit to straight men having a wank. Basically, yeah. That's how it feels to me. And what's really capped it for me, where I've got mm -hmm. a bit of a... Mm, she's saying that she's the inventor of gay pop. Can someone get Kylie on the phone? <laughs> Erasure, you know, maybe maybe they might want to have a word. For uh, Pet Shop Boys? Yeah, I, I mean, even going further back, really. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, Noel Coward. Could Noel Coward give, give her a little bit of a call? Well, no, he's dead. He's <laughs> dead for quite some time. Well, you know, yeah. on the Oasia. But she's also getting into beef with um, other people who, honestly, I don't know who the hell they are. Um, a 16-year-old rapper called Little Tay. Oh, Little Tay? Little, do you know who Little I Tay know is? I Little Tay is. I have no idea who Little Tay is. Yeah, they're, they're a, quite a young rapper. Apparently she doesn't have any idea about who um, Jojo Siwa is either. Well, it's easy, Miss, if you think it's that <laughs> dance mom's thing. <laughs> well, yeah, um, apparently um, there's some back of it. Honestly, it's just really tedious. You could, if you look at 
to Twitter rather than X. Um, yes, yeah, because we'll continue to dead name it until Elon Musk stops dead naming other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they're arguing back and forth, and it's just all very. I mean, oh, apparently, um, Karma is not. Um, I think it's apparently uh, one of Miley Cyrus's refused songs. Refused song. Yeah. I like the full lot of a refused song. <laughs> went, I'm here to be a song. You are refused. <laughs> well, it didn't make the cut for Miley, uh, so JoJo's taking it up. Apparently, there's another version of it by uh, somebody called Brit Smith. Oh, Brit Smith. Uh, they had an unreleased version of it, and oh, now okay, they've cool. released that version, and that's out selling JoJo's. Yeah. <sighs> Let's move on from that okay. and go on to the Dior Pre Fall Fashion Show. Oh, okay. Now... That's a bit of a step change for you, isn't it? It is a little bit. Well, I'm, the, I'm very fashionable. Says the man who, before we came on, said, I should wear my other outfit, but the other one is all black. There is a difference, and if you understood fashion, you would understand, the difference but you obviously the, don't. The 99.9% black you're wearing now and all black. Or am I going colour band and, and you're the, really a, sat there like Joseph in his technical dream coat? There's a technical difference, and um, yes, you yes. just don't, don't appreciate these things. Anyway, sometimes it's not about the fashion at these events. Okay. It's more about who's sitting on the front row. Okay. And yeah. sitting on the front row this year, we have... Carl Lagerfeld. No, they're dead. Be interesting. Coco Chanel. It would be interesting. No, it's an actress. Okay. Naomi Watts. No idea. That lady there. Oh, Naomi Watts. Yeah, yeah, down there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, it's not just that Naomi Watts is there. Mm-hmm. It's that she's also brought along her daughter. Okay. Kai Schreiber. Okay. Now, Kai Schreiber is um, a transsexual, and um, she brought her along to sit on the front row of the uh, fashion show and was visibly beaming to support Kai being there. Nice. Um, and they've been supportive all the way through their journey. Their um, father uh, is Lee Schreiber, actor and director. Honestly, I do think that he's possibly topped... The taking the daughter out to great events okay. back when they were eight, rather than they're fifteen years old now. Okay, back when they were eight, they took Kai to Comic Con dressed as Harley Quinn from Batman. Okay, so even at that young age, supporting like dress up however you want to be and and and, and, and work along. So <laughs> you've just you've gone very over I, I've, here, Miss. I've gone a bit. You've gone very over here. Like horizontal. And it, it's just a bit difficult. I just want to make way for the picture. You don't need to make way for the picture. Right. <laughs> it's it's, it's, a, picture wide, it's a wide angle. It's not that wide. <laughs> not got wide as it's before. <laughs> but yes, it's, they're very, a couple of very supportive parents. Lovely. Debuting their daughter. Beautiful. I Do like they have that. debutante balls anymore? No. Or is it just of, fashion front rows? Kind of got a, well, they do still have like a debutante sort of like thing, but it's not as big. You don't have, yeah. So coming out, we kind of still... <laughs> um, like, uh, have your <laughs> NHS bag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's that coming out balls and stuff, it kind of fades off, but it's still, yeah. it's still done, like finishing school still exists. So. But it's just, it's just nice to see supportive parents being parents. supportive. Yes. Yeah. And they're not even together anymore. They split up quite a while back. So they're, so. they're co-parenting. Yeah. Uh, nice. So even even better. Last but not least, mm-hmm. Billie Eilish. She's a bad guy. She do is do a bad do guy. Do be, do She's um, going to be coming out with her third studio album. Are we excited? Do we like, I like to Billie? Billie Eilish? Yeah. Well. It's due for release on the 17th of May, but mm-hmm. she's like trying to keep it quite hush-hush and not try to release any singles beforehand. Okay. And last November, she kind of put it out there that she's one of us. I believe she said, I thought it was obvious. Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> like... she said, yeah. Um, she said that physically she's attracted to women, uh, but she's so intimidated by them and their beauty and their presence. And she just didn't realise that people didn't know. I like presence. So she's been at Coachella. Okay. And trialling some of this new music. And, of course, somebody in the audience has recorded it and released it. So whether she wants to keep it under wraps or not, that's not going to happen. I I think that's a a very clever way of releasing music. Mm -hmm. Because Madonna did that. Mm -hmm. 
I don't, I don't want anybody to download this song and released it and let people download it. Then had abuse in the middle of the, the song, wasn't they? Well, if people were confused about her being a lesbian, mm-hmm. she, they won't be after this next track. Um, it's called Lunch. Okay. And I would read out what the lyrics are. Read out the lyrics. No, I'm not going to. They are actually filthy. Give me how I want to read them. Uh, they, they're filthy. I'll read them. It's fine. Where are the lyrics? They're, they're just there. I could eat that girl for lunch as she dances on my tongue. Tastes like she might be the one. And if I can never get enough, I could buy her so much stuff, it's craving not a crush. That's quite sweet. It's 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 very explicit. It's not saying I want to stick my face in a minge and rummage around like it's a... a that, that's dancer. exactly what it's saying. No, it's, she said I could, I could. I could. It, it's, is, so it's got the, para, it, it's it's got just the preface of I could. That's what makes it romantic. Why have you got the BBC News on here? Oh, that's not the BBC. And that's the end of the showbiz news. Thanks, Mike. Stick I around. Don't, don't even think that's possible. Behave. Uh, will you stop? You're going to ruin my browser history. It's your browser history I'm looking at. Stick around, as next it's Mike in the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's go into the dank, poorly lit, disgusting parts of the web where Mike likes to go rummaging around. It's Mike and the Buzz. Sorry, I was on, I was on a, shall we say, a social networking application. Mm, I know exactly what you were up to. What, what do you think I was up to? Filth. Not quite filth, arranging filth. Arranging filth, because, yeah. Because, like it or not, Grinder is here as part of our lives. Well, for those of us who have success with it, yes. What do you, what do you define as success? As in getting your rocks off. Yeah, get your rocks off and you're watching Grindr. Anyway, um, Grinder is trying to, to move away from its somewhat, should say, baser level mm-hmm. and try to become more of a community. Okay. Uh-huh. Isn't that just about gangbangs? No, no. Um, so Grinder back in the day it wasn't a hookup app. It actually started off as a finding local people and and it was like aiming at relationships as so well. So why the hell did they call it Grinder? That's really only going to mean one thing unless you're into metalwork. Yeah. Well, it, it it got. Should we say we we took the name and went? We're going to make it this as a community at large, and destroyed actual dating. Talk about um, nominative determinism. Yeah. Um, Oh, your middle name is... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> fisted. Um, so, they're, they bring out something that they're calling gayborhoods. Okay? Okay. So, on, on Grindr, they, ha- they have the app way, the thing where you can change the location, say, I'm going to be going to, I don't know, let's say, somewhere in France. Okay. And you can have a look at the people around France and go, mm, do I still want to travel there? Is there talent? Can I get laid? Um, but it doesn't show you there. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what they want to do is do more of a. If you sh- change a location to there, it will show you at that location as well. So a bit like funny. Google Maps with cock. A bit like Google Maps with cock. A bit like Scruff have been doing for years with the whole "I'm visiting this place," mm-hmm. right? Um, a bit like other apps let you do anyway. Grinders just going. I'm going to get on that bandwagon now. Okay. Because they think that they, if they let you see people at other locations, it's going to help you build relationships with people in different parts of the world with different viewpoints and make it more of a community-based app. Okay. I'm just going to get dick from lots of other parts of the country. <laughs> I'm going to be deciding where I'm going on holiday based on what I can get. <laughs> yeah. but I, went... I only use Grindr when I'm travelling. I don't yeah. use it at home anymore. Oh, that's been... Not for years. I've completed Manchester. Um... <laughs> it's not Pokemon Go, you know. <laughs> Pokemon gay. Pokemon gay. It is. <laughs> 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 Helps you get your steps in. It's it's location and geospace. Sometimes you have to swipe a lot. Um, <laughs> swiping away at the screen. Let's say screen. <laughs> um, aggressive fingering. Um, but yeah, they're moving much towards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, didn't use lube. <laughs> um, but it's like they're, they're trying to move away from just this 3D underbelly that they have. 
and go much towards like a, creating a space. For it's it. not really an underbelly, is it? It's the bold bare face brass of it, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, the the, the image is a mask. Actually, now I look at it, it does look like Groot's got a tan. It looks it looks like Groot in a sex dungeon. (laughs) I am Groot. I am Groot. I I am Groot. Groot. (laughs) It's very niche porn. Uh, (laughs) But yeah. You never have to you never have a problem with getting wood for you, (laughs) is (laughs) he? Sorry, don't worry. Well, moving quite on. Um, do you know what shooty bum pain is? Mm. It's been a while, he says. <laughs> <laughs> an, an, an indelicate lover. Indelicate? No. Um, so it's described as a sudden cramping. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and like a severe, like jabby pain. Okay. That everyone can get. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not just a gaze and days. Right. But that happens to me when I see somebody, like, you know when you see somebody you really, really like and your bum twitches? Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's not twitching, it's winking. <laughs> well, for you. I <laughs> Winking. Um, so, Dr. Sunj, I'm from... Um, Sunj. Sunj, right, um, has basically said that the, what is called the, the pain in the poo pipe... The pain in the poo pipe. The pain in the poo pipe. The poo pipe pain. Um, is called a proxilagiflulex. 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 Yeah. Proxil poo-flex poo pain. A physical pain in the arse. Right? I've met some pains in the arse. No, no, a physical pain in the arse, not just someone. Right? And you get a shooting pain in your backside. It's actually your, the inside um, sphincter spasming very quickly mm-hmm. and it causes a pain sensation. Mm-hmm. Right, and so what he says if you ever are having a sudden sharp shooting pain in your bottom and your trousers are on, mm-hmm. yeah, the the key, key thing to do is relax. Okay, maybe give your bottom a bit of a massage. Okay, to try and relax the muscles within. What's with the face? <laughs> Don't really need the excuse to just. Grab your ass in public. Yeah. He's not talking about just grabbing your bum cheeks and giving it a felt. He it, it, it says give it a massage. It, 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 so it's the sphincter muscle that needs a massage. You've, you've done that before. I, damn right I have. <laughs> 41. Mm. <laughs> it's like I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. That's a lie. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a great little bit of information that if you do just get a, a sudden pain in your bum... It's nothing you've done. It's just a, a random spasm of a muscle. It reminds me of an old... Um... An old friend? No, no. Who's the Scottish comedian? I forgot his name. A couple of them. Uh, he's, he's got yeah, dementia he's... and he's, he's, he's losing his mind at the moment. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly. It reminds me of Billy Connolly's itchy bum sketch. Okay. Where it basically says, like, you shouldn't feel conscious about having an itchy bum. Whereas if... Because you think you're going to scratch your ass in public... People are going to look at you and go, ooh, you're a bit rude. Whereas if you just shout out, I've got an itchy bum, and then just grab it and start scratching away. It's a very okay. famous sketch. So famous, I knew all about it. And if you <laughs> like to shout out in the street about your itchy areas, um, feel free not to share it with us on at the Could TV on social media. You can Actually, send pictures yeah. of your bum if you like. It's fine, send yeah, them over. Yeah. I like pictures of bums. Yeah, because remember, he's first. Um, it goes nicely over to our story of the week. Now, I have said this a couple of times, and it may not be noted out there in, in the real world, but I recently lost my father. Okay. Right? Um, and as I keep telling you whenever I'm being unreasonable, I am recently bereft. And so that allows me to get away with blue murder, like eating 18 sausage rolls before the show starts. Um, however, I've missed out on a trick. Okay. Right? And this comes courtesy of Rio de Janeiro and a lady called Erica Vieira Nunes. Nunes. Nunes, which I think is a beautiful name, right? She went into a local bank, mm-hmm. right, um, with her uncle mm-hmm. in a wheelchair, right? And he wanted to take out a loan for 17,000 rias, about two and a half grand. Okay. Okay. The, um, the bank tellers were a bit concerned that the, you know, the uncle wasn't all with it 
And she said, no, no, if he's unwell, do you need to go to the hospital, Uncle? I can take you now. I just need to sign this paper. I can take you now. And I noticed he was being a bit floppy. She did not weekend at Bernie's him. Huh? He, he was dead already? He was already dead, right? And she was trying to take a loan out in the bank with a dead body, who we're not sure whether he was the uncle or not. How... <laughs> How how was she going to fake him signing the document? She was helping him with his hand, and just move it there. And she was trying to help him sign it. But the fact what was that, they alerted to the fact was the fact that the, the gentleman was kept doing this and collapsing, and she had to physically bring him up and put his head forward, and he wasn't speaking. So, yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that. The police were called. Okay, mm -hmm. She was arrested and charged for the nicest, beautiful, most wonderful sounding charge in the history of police enforcement. Charged for vilification of a corpse. <laughs> vilification? Vilification. So making the corpse do something illegal is apparently a crime in Rio de Janeiro, which I thought was a brilliant phrase. But it also means that it's been done lots before. <laughs> it's just, like a corpse is obviously they've set up a law because corpses are used to commit crimes all the time. Mm. The vilification of a corpse. Oh. I thought that was a brilliant thing. It's a beautiful turn of phrase, but yeah. it also makes me very worried about ever going to Rio. Why? Because. There's just obviously lots of criminal corpses running around. Not running around, being pushed around a wheelchair. <laughs> if it was a running around, it wouldn't really be a corpse, it'd be a zombie. Well, that would still count. It'd still be a corpse committing crimes, especially if they're nibbling away at people. Vilification of a corpse, I thought was a beautiful phrase. And this is something you wanted to get away with with your own father. <sighs> if I'd known about it, I might have had a go. <laughs> Have you ever tried to it's close a good down? job you didn't get on with him. <laughs> hey, I didn't have a problem with him. He had a problem with me because he wasn't a fan of the case. Um, nah, that's a him issue. Um, if I'd known that, that would have made my interaction with the Halifax a little bit more interesting. <laughs> there with a death certificate going I to close down my father's account. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't, need to, he doesn't need to sign for anything. I've already done it with nothing <laughs> in the bank account. Um, but that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Just I and sometimes don't know the kind of depths that you'll plumb to. Anyway, <laughs> you've not been on my grinder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are actually talking about that. Uh, anyway, stick around as we have coming up our game to play in game of the week. Welcome back, and yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud. We're going to play a round of Lazy Susan's Question Roulette, and this one is for the man who was asked once not to do the Macarena naked, but insisted the shopping centre enjoy it. It's you, Mike. Off your pop. It wasn't a shopping centre. Was it not? No, it was a local library. Game of the Week. OK, Mike's got out his Lazy Susan and he's ready to give it a spin. I have a selection of questions. Mm-hmm. When the Lazy Susan stops, uh, we'll get a question to ask you. If you spin it that quickly, it's just... Oh! OK, movies! Ooh! Okay. I'm quite, I, I, I did go to film school, so I should be quite good at movies. I just made sure I'm sucking off a teacher. OK, so your question is in film. Mm-hmm. Who directed the film Gone with the Wind? Gone with wind. Gone with the wind. Um, I don't know actually. No, not a clue. Um, think about think about someone with a hefty cough. Wheezy McFadden. No, Victor Fleming. Ooh, ooh, that's quite revolting. That is. You know, not everybody think not everything we have in this show revolves around the same phrase. <laughs> well, you know, you like to be consistent. Music. Music. It makes the people come together. I usually um, find Porter's Head does that for me. What? Porter's Head. Mm. Porter's Head. Great, great background music for when you're a finger shag. Okay, what is the name of the singer 
who sings the song Sexy Back. Sexy Back? Sexy Back. I like big, but I cannot lie. You better look at me now. Justin Timberlake. Why do you listen to the gallery? Because they're right. They're not. They are. It wasn't Justin Timberlake, it was Justin Bieber. No way, is that Justin Bieber? <laughs> no, it's not, of course it's Justin Timberlake. You trying to be all clever. Possibly being clever as being, uh, as being tricksy as a hobbit's is. Movies again. Movie? It's my week. Is it? Yeah. Well, she did so well on the last one. <laughs> Which actor? Mm hmm. Best known for his collaboration with director Steven Spielberg, starred in Shaving Ryan's Private Saving Ryan's Pri- Saving Private Ryan. I believe there was a film called Shaving Private there Ryan, was. but that was that was a different, and different also, genre. And also, Saving Ryan's Privates. Uh, Tom Hanks. It was Tom Hanks. I do like Tom Hanks. I, 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 I like the Cockney rhyming slam. I, I, I feel that he's a, a lovely person when you're on your own. General knowledge is the next one. Oh, boo. Oh, boo. I'm not going to do well on this. You wake up, boo. Mm. That was a boo Radley's, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Um, when was the Queen born? Oh, 1942. Mm. No. 1926. Oh, wow. Yeah. She was getting on before she died. She was. Bless her. One of our oldest li- living monarchs, if not She would have had to send herself a card. Telegram. <laughs> Music. Oh, no. Movies. Movies! Yay! And apparently you're good at these. In A Town Like Alice, what does Alice refer to? Um, a town like Malice or a town like Alice? Alice, a town called Alice, yeah. Uh, what, from the commitment? No, no. It's a town called Malice. Town called Malice. That would, mm, yes, I'm confusing things. Mm, I, I don't know. Uh, it's referring to Alice Springs. Oh. Is it? There's Alice Springs. Alice. Alice, who is Alice? I, I remember that song. Do you? Who's For 25 it? years. You'd be living next door to Alice. Alice? Who, who the is Alice? Alice. Right, next question general knowledge again. Oh no, it's not, it's sports, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry, it was sports. Don't make me talk about football again on this show. Right, again. You were asked to talk about footballers, not football. I was not asking you what the offside rule was. I was asking you to talk about a handsome gentleman who's marrying another handsome gentleman who happened to wear shorts. Skinny boys in shorts. With very ripped abs. <sighs> OK. Give me a gymnast. They know how to work their way around a pole. And a column, apparently. Which country did Graham Fowler play cricket for? I think you can... Off. <laughs> but I don't have a blooming monkey. Have a guess of a country that plays cricket. Uh, Venezuela. That England. well-known Venezuelan cricket team. England. England. The country in which you are currently sat. Why, do we play cricket? Quite famously, yeah. Do we? You never heard of the Ashes? What? Cricket match between, the UK, between England and Australia. Oh, only if you're talking about David Bowie. David Bowie? Ashes to Ashes. All right, okay, I was going to say Ashes to Ashes, I said Ashes. Uh, General knowledge. I I really don't, I hate sport. It's okay. I hate it with a passion. In which English county Mm -hmm. is Blenheim Palace located? Uh, Windsor. In which county? Isn't Windsor a county? Town. No, I thought it was a county. No. And geography's not my friend either. <laughs> Oxfordshire. 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 Oh, okay. Difference between geography and knowledge there. 
Oh, it's music. Uh, mu music I might be all right with. Well, give give music a go. Who sang Venus? A banana rama. Correct. And several other people after. She's got it. The Baby, she's got it. The um, razor advert for ladies' legs. Hasn't it been covered by J-Lo as well recently? She can shut up. I don't like her. Oh, sport. Oh, you did that deliberately. I didn't do that one deliberately. It happened to land on sport. He's which, mean to me. Which race came first? The thousand guineas or the two thousand guineas? The human. I'm being facetious because I, I don't give a monkey. Yeah, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not important. It's very important. It's not important. The difference of a thousand guineas. Uh, the first one. Um, it's actually the two thousand guineas. Oh. Mm -hmm. What? How? How irrelevant? <laughs> I it's really a... hate sports. <laughs> I really hate. Sports. <laughs> oh, he's very cross with me. I hate people that wear all black, but you <laughs> oh, can't decide which crop. version of all black he's going to wear. Oh, look, sport again. <laughs> oh, you're just doing this on purpose now. Okay. Go on. Who owned... So this mm -hmm. isn't even really sport, it's ownership related. Who owned the triple grand national winner, Red Rum? Uh, a very disappointed man, because didn't Red Rum get kidnapped? Noel de Mer. Noel de Mer. Yeah. <laughs> and nearly said Noel Gordon. <laughs> you know who that is, don't you? What? Noel Gordon. No. Don't know who Nell Gordon is. Nell Gordon? Who's Noel. Nell Gordon. Noel, as in the first. Hmm. Right, Gordon. First Gordon. Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about now. Who Sorry, Gallery have been very, very helpful. Uh, but I actually really only know of the lady from Crossroads because of Russell T. Davis's show, which was very, very good. And what was she called in that show? I can't remember. Noel f***ing Gordon. Somebody might... Need a calming, calming green tea. I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed green tea. It's got caffeine in it. Ca green tea doesn't happen. You can have caffeine-free green tea. Yeah, what's the point in that? Because it might be calming. Sport. Need chamomile. Sport again. Sport. Oh, well, funny that. Fun. I didn't stop it on sport. It stops itself. Right. You may tell my, me that. You may tell yourself that. But will you tell Noel Gordon? Oh, she's dead. <laughs> she had a cancer, quite tragically. <laughs> just after coming back on Crossroads, we should know if you actually absorbed the show that you watched. Um, I just enjoyed this. I didn't really realise I was going to be questioned on it later. OK, so, apart from you, mm -hmm. who is nicknamed the Big Easy? Oh, you cow. Um, Raymond Chandler. Raymond Chandler. Raymond Chandler. Let's go to break. <laughs> Let's go to break. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to beautify our surroundings as Mike is in Crafty Queens. When you're at home, do you like a, a vase of fresh flowers? I do, actually, yes. I can, I can believe that from you. Yeah. Um, the I problem have with two lovely vases. And are they they've currently stuffed with blooms? They are. Oh, yeah. What, what I, blooms do you have? Uh, they're carnations. Oh, I take, I, classic. From the beginning of spring all the way through to Samhain, or October, I have flowers and then I thread them into a nice garland. That keeps me through winter. Of dried flowers. Our nations. Yeah. Anyway, um, but obviously flowers die. Yes, they do. So what we need to do is we need to make something that will last longer than dead flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, to create our own little flowers. That's what we're going to do today. Oh, 
Okay. okay. Um, so in front of you, you have some tissue paper. Mm-hmm. You have blue tissue paper, and I have pink tissue paper. Mine looks a bit like denim. Like what? Denim. Denim? Denim. Oh, denim. Denim, denim, denim. Right, so what you want to do is you only want one sheet of, of, of tissue paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Denim. It doesn't look like that on the camera, but it does look like that in front of me. It looks like navy blue tissue paper. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you okay. really want it. So I want one Ow. sheet. Okay. One sheet. One sheet. Like that toilet paper where... It's, mm. it's kitchen roll. Using that as, as toilet paper, I think you've got a very... Anyway. There we go. Okay, so fold it in half. Uh, along the lengthways or no, no, no. along... I can't see you because I'm looking at myself. Oh, along the length place. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, conceited. What you're going to do is you're going to roll. You've got a, a, a stick. A, 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 a tube. A, a tube? Thing here. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll the tissue paper up with, in that tube. Okay. Okay. Trying to keep it nice and tight. You want a tight roll? You want it to be nice and tight now. I remember what that used to be like. Uh huh. Pretend you're rolling a cigarette. I, I, I've quit smoking. Have you quit? Well done, you. Okay. How long have you quit smoking for? Uh, it's only been a couple of days, but. It's the hard time. It's the hard time to quit smoking. Uh, well, um, I, I, I have means around that, but those means are harder to get hold of, so this time when I quit, I better um, stick to it. Huh? I'll explain another time, don't worry. Right. It's, it's gone a little bit awry, but it's still tight. Let me see. As in, it's, it's not straight. It's not straight it needs, anymore, It needs no. to be straight, it, otherwise it won't work. It needs to be straight, OK. As well, straight as possible. That's not very on brand for this programme. What are, you, what are you inferring? It can either be tight and a little bit off-centre, or it can be loose and straight. OK. Um. Draw into that, whatever you may wish to. Okay. It's, it's coming off again. I'll, I'll just need to adjust a little bit. Yeah, just adjust a little bit. Just, yeah, there we go. Okay. And right. Then... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I bashed my end a little bit too hard, then. Oh, I can't get the tube out. Do you need to get the tube out? I need out to be able to get the tube out afterwards. Okay, I can do that. Right. right. Okay, once you've done that, what you want to do is about three quarters of the way down. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to fold it in half, but you want to snip all the way through apart from a little bit. Okay. okay. So like three quarters of the way through? No, so I'll show you. I'll show you. So we're going to do it that way uh-huh. and then that way. Oh, both sides. Okay. So, so you've there's got a little collar in the middle. A little collar in the middle, but it's mostly cut all the way through. Okay. So a little bit there, but not all the way through. Mm-hmm. And then the other side, a little bit there, but not all the way through. Yeah, got you. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're, with the, the bigger end... Oh, I, I, I like the big end. Okay. We're going to cut the sides off. From that previous cut? From the previous cut and into a, a little bit of a loop. Oh, okay. Arcing over, then. Arcing over. Okay. I, I'm with you. Okay. There we go. How far up do you want the curve? So just so you, they're going to be the petals of your flower. So as big as your flower you want to be. I, I like a I like a big petal. Okay. Oof. Oh, Ooh, dear. Okay. Oh, it's it's quite a lot of effort. This arts and crafts, isn't it? Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. Ah, arts and crafts. <laughs> Okay, look, I'm an adopted northerner. Uh-huh. I'm not so northern and been here long enough speak that properly, my yeah. diction has dis- been destroyed. Oh, boy, is now correct. Um, so, then what you want to do is in the middle. In the middle? Yeah. You want to find one of your, your, the middle petal that you can. Uh, the middlest petal I can. Okay, okay, and pull it up. Like that. And as you pull up, it'll spin a little bit. Or okay. come off in my hand. Are oh, you too 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 rough? It's oh. <laughs> been said before. Oh, 
Um, Don't I, worry, mine, I think mine has also gone fun. wrong. <laughs> no. I don't think I've caught enough throw. Um, I mean, it, it's somewhere there. Um, I don't... <laughs> If I was trying to be romantic and take that uh, to someone and go, here's a bunch of flowers for you. Um, if you're taking paper flowers to someone to be romantic, you deserve to be single. <laughs> Especially when they look like this. <laughs> right. So, so when you pull up, it should look like that. Because you do it gently. Um. Okay. And then when you push it back down, you keep it straight and it should just fold in on itself. Like that. What's yours look like? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? Is In life, has been asked as by many as people, and then you just you just give it the, the bottom bit a bit of a twist to hold it all together. Okay. That, that this is going to be the thing that saves it. That final step. I don't you, have a you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give up um, buying flowers. A little, little flower. This will save on water as well. I'll, 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 I'll put this and it'll be just as beautiful as the real thing. Got some of petals back. And if you um, can't get any pin or any vagine or anything in between, it's probably because you're giving people paper flowers like this. I have a little flower. And, and, and I have a, a little flower. Yours, do you remember in like the 70s and early 80s, whenever we saw the Queen, she had a hat with a fascinator on? Yeah. And it was always that fluffy, like... To, to, uh, look, even I'll be honest, I admit that this is a complete failure and looks a little bit like a uh, bird's ass after it's been shot down um, by... Um, Probably the Queen. A bird's... Right, she's dead for a start. <laughs> it looks like a bird's arse after it's been shot down. Yeah. It, it literally... Why looks... is that a frame of reference you have? <sighs> Why are you looking at bird's asses that have been shot? Well, you know, the rest of them has been run off with. Are you saying that the people hunting birds leave the arseholes behind? Well, if they've shot them off and they've left a rather ragged plumage... You don't, you don't want that to take home for a good stuffing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. And don't forget, we are on TikTok as well. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. You've just done that, so I can't do it to you. I can do this. <laughs> Get her off. <laughs> Behave. <laughs> Behave. <laughs> just because you're... <laughs> Don't shove it in my face just because yours is nice and mine's rubbish. You said that before. <laughs>